Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you've had a great summer so far, even with the still somewhat restricted COVID restrictions, uh, especially between the Canadian and U.S. border. Yes, it's been a long time since I put out an episode. Uh, this is going to be the start of our summer series, our sailing series around Lake Ontario. Last year, we did the same thing. We were not able to go to the United States because the border was locked down. We kept saying in those episodes, oh, next year. Next year, we're going to be able to go see the American side of Lake Ontario and go check out those cities. Unfortunately, this year was sort of the same. The border isn't really officially locked down, but there's so many restrictions, like you need to get a COVID test before you cross the border. When you're coming back into Canada, you need a COVID test again, and it's just so many stipulations and hoops to jump through. We decided we would not do the American side this year. Well, we'll do it hopefully next year. But we did hit a bunch of cities this year that we didn't hit last year. Also, the restrictions were loosened soon after our vacation started. So we were able to get some reciprocals. We are now at the Collins Bay Yacht Club in Kingston, which is the new club this year. And because it's a yacht club, we have reciprocals with other yacht clubs, assuming they have open space, which was not always the case. And we were able to get reciprocals at four, four or five different clubs. So the whole series has already been filmed. The episode you're about to see was when Janice and I were about to leave the dock. Our anticipation was we filmed it, I edited it that morning, and I thought we'll just upload it from our club with the Wi-Fi and before we go. So we'll, it was all about, here's how we prepared for this big four week sailing voyage. And we show you a tour of our boat with how stacked it is. And um, we thought we would upload it from the club. We learned that most sailing clubs, just like if you go to a coffee shop or anything else, have deathly slow upload speeds. So we sat for at least two, two and a half hours waiting for it to upload and we got to 6%. So we gave up. And we went on with our vacation. We said, well, well, we'll upload that first episode at the next city. And then we'd get there and we couldn't find fast Wi-Fi. I don't know how these professional YouTubers who travel all the time upload these huge files. I mean, when you're shooting even in 1080p, a 20 minute video is like five gigabytes and five gigabytes on deathly slow internet takes all day. So you have to sit with your laptop in a coffee shop for like six, eight hours, maybe, maybe longer. So I don't know how they do it. I guess when you get really big, you just buy SIM cards at whatever country you're in with unlimited data or huge data and just upload straight from your cell phone. Anyways, that's why this episode is going to seem weird because here I am after the vacation's already over and it was an awesome vacation. We had awesome weather. I got to use my drone a lot. Every city that wasn't too close to an airport, there is a nine mile radius or nine kilometer radius around every airport that you cannot fly. So some cities I was not able to drone, but this year... I tried to drone every city that we went to. We went uh, to, oh, Belleville, Coburg, Whitby, Toronto twice, um, uh, Etobicoke, Hamilton, which is also Burlington. We got to go to Niagara on the Lake, which we weren't able to do last year. We got into a reciprocal there and got to spend two nights at their yacht club. And we went to see uh, the eighth wonder of the world, the Niagara Falls. We we went on our personal electric vehicles, which you'll show the we'll show you through a bunch of these episodes. And that was about a, I think it was about a 50 kilometer round trip. And uh, Janice's scooter ran out of power on the way back, so we had to walk about three kilometers at the end because her scooter ran out of juice. That was a learning lesson. So you'll see all of that. It's going to be a great series. I'm looking forward to giving it to you. This episode, again, is before we left, and it's mostly going to show you the tour of our boat fully stacked and also talk about if you want to see what we're doing in real time, especially in the summer when we're doing stuff uh, sailing-wise, subscribe to our uh, Instagram and our Facebook because we post pictures and short little clip videos that don't take too much data on there all the time through our travels, and then you know what we're doing in real time, and that way you can say, oh, they're going from this city to this city. If you live in that city, we'd love to meet you. So yeah, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Cruising Off Duty Facebook page and Instagram for more real-time updates about what we're doing. We are all looking forward to going to the Annapolis Sailboat Show this year, finally. It was canceled last year. We're hoping it's open this year, and we hope that by the uh, October timeframe, the Canadian-US border is open again, and we're able to cross without having to jump through a million tests and loop, uh, you know, hoops to get there. So look forward to those episodes coming up in the future. So hopefully you enjoy this episode. Again, give it a thumbs up if you do. It helps the algorithm uh, suggest us to more people. Subscribe if you haven't already and enjoy the video. Hello. Good morning. We are back to sailing in 2021. It's been a while since I made an episode, like a long time since I made an episode. Yes, and it's all been the a long year. Yeah, actually in the footage that I did, 
most recently is from last summer. So the reason for that is I don't really enjoy making episodes if it's not something I would want to watch. And so mm -hmm. us doing all the boat prep, the waxing, the washing, yeah. the working, I fixed the fridge, I did a bunch of other tools. That... Everybody's seen those types of things a yeah. hundred times. And for me, I always make episodes that I would want to watch. So if it's all boring boat work stuff, I just, I just figure you don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. So that's why, in case you put in the comments if you've got a difference of opinion, if you'd like to see how uh, putting a boat together takes, yeah. but it's a lot of work. You know, I feel, that's what I feel like. It's enough work. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't like to add work by having to make myself look presentable. <laughs> <laughs> that's what <laughs> it's then, about. And then also set up all this camera yeah. stuff and stow every little thing. Yeah, it does add a lot of but time. I already have a really long to-do list. It's like yeah. another yeah. thing. I'm like, should we film this? She's like, no. No, because then I gotta fix my hair. Let's just do it. Yeah, okay. So this, this, let's talk about where we're going. So we're doing a four week, well maybe less if it's not as much fun as we're hoping it's gonna be. Doing a four week passage, we're gonna go the same passage we did last year through the Murray Canal. So we're going to yeah. leave today from Kingston. We're, it's now the 27th, I think it's the 27th. The 27th of June, we're gonna leave yes. today. We're gonna to end up anchoring in a bay near Belleville. And then we're gonna go through the Murray Canal. Our next stop is gonna be in Coburg on the 20. 8th, the night, evening of the 28th, the evening of the 29th, we should be in Frenchman's Bay and Pickering. The evening of the 30th, we should be in Ca uh, Toronto for Canada Day, where we're meeting your son mm -hmm. and his girlfriend. Yeah, so my son and his girlfriend are going to come on for Canada Day Thursday morning and stay on till Sunday, mm -hmm. so that we can tour the islands with them. Um, his girlfriend is from Labrador, and she had to go home for the lockdown last, last year, year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so she missed out on boating. So she's super excited. Yeah, she's never been on the boat. So no. he last year he brought a couple of his yeah, female friends. Yeah, co-worker friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, student friends and Yeah, so you might have seen them in the last year's episodes. So Toronto's going to be Canada Day. And we, just before we were on camera, Janice let me know. I didn't know this. that They're still not going to do the big city fireworks. Of course not. No. Ooh, I thought this would be the year that the yeah. fireworks would be back. So mm -hmm. we're going to count on private fireworks. And we learned from last yeah. year that Cherry Beach, because it is part of the mainland, it's a peninsula that comes out beside Toronto Island. And so therefore people can drive out and park there. <clears throat> and also it's available for public transit and biking. Like, yeah. like young kids, young yeah. kids. Yeah, the young cool kids mm -hmm. that launch fireworks. They shot they a, go. a lot of fireworks from that beach. Yeah. And we were kind of not sure where to anchor to see fireworks. We anchored on the inside facing yeah. Toronto, hoping that somebody on Toronto mainland would fire fireworks. There was a bit, but we kept noticing them over at Cherry Beach. So this year we're going to anchor over by yeah. Cherry Beach. So and we, we have see. a couple of our own things. We'll yeah. send the kids to shore to launch. We've got our own private fireworks too, mm -hmm. but uh, they might be underwhelming. Some people have better, no. more money to spend than we do for fireworks. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, um, so that's Toronto and then Canada Day for three or four days. We'll be with them. And then we're going to start going again uh, east, no west, yeah. west mm -hmm. towards. We never went to Etobicoke last year and okay. there's a few other places. We'll we like Bronte Beach. We didn't see, yes. Bronte Beach was nice. Mm -hmm. I love Oakville, so we'll go back there. Yeah, Oakville was nice. Um, and, and we'll, see. we'll just see where we go but we've got four weeks scheduled for vacation this year is going to be more fun to explore the shore than last year because last year we had the folding bikes uh, unfortunately it was an absolutely heat sweltering heat wave for the whole time we were on the boat like 35 degrees every day and it got to the point where we were just so hot that leaving our nice refreshing boat where we can swim to go to shore and bike around in 35 degree heat which is like over 100 degrees uh, fahrenheit um was just like too much. Some days it was just too much. We'd go to shore to get groceries and stuff, but we wouldn't do a lot of exploring of the town because it was just too hot for that. But now we have our, she has an electric scooter, which I'll show you. I'll do a quick mm -hmm. outdoor tour. And I have an electric unicycle, which I have to wear like a motocross helmet and all that stuff. So I guess a scooter might have been a better decision. But anyways, I have that. So that gives us a lot of range. Like I think we have over 100 kilometers mm -hmm. of range. So we can go explore far and wide. We can go up numerous yeah. times. Like it is too bad that co like the COVID took too long to get resolved to the point where we can actually, because the, the place we're at now, they have tons of reciprocal agreements with mm -hmm. all the clubs along the way. And I spent some time before this trip calling and emailing them all to say, are you going to be accepting visitors through the recipro reciprocals? And all of them were said no. Yeah. So that's too bad. Yeah, so, and, and also the border's not open. Yeah. There's a bunch of reciprocal agreements with clubs across the border. In the U.S. And yep. uh, we're not going to get to take advantage of those this year. Um, yeah. So when I go year. outside, I'll show we're at a new yeah. club. We're at Collins Bay Marina now. Instead of last few years, we've been at Portsmouth Olympic Harbor, which is run by the city and really mismanaged. Bad, 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 bad. So we moved to Collins Bay. It's privately owned. It has a yacht club. So like that, she said, lots of reciprocals. We got yeah. excited. This is going to be the year we're yeah. going to be able to actually stay in actual 
harbors in actual slips instead of always yeah. anchoring out and hoping we don't get a storm which is going to make us drag and waking up in the middle of the night when it's windy to check the anchor and all that stuff um but like she said yeah. she did the research and nobody's taking yeah. reciprocals if they if they do it'll be not till later in the summer well yeah. our vacation will be over so yeah and the border to the states is officially not closed but you need to get a covid test before coming back and if you don't have both vaccinations you got to quarantine or is that yeah yeah and i don't have my both i'm the only one who doesn't have i have both one vaccinations yet. janice only has one of the two so so that kind of makes it like that's like, off the table yeah well. we're not, <laughs> hey, and then you have to get tested in the states somewhere to no. prove that you don't have covid before you can come back that's just way too much work to nope. just spend a day or two biking around some town and so. to get booze for a quarter of the price that yeah. i can get booze well, here half the price yeah no it's quarter Oh, it's quarter. Is it? Oh. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it's American. Yeah, who knows how much longer that'll stay. <laughs> Canada always has been more more socialist than the United States in the past, so we have a lot more tax on things like cigarettes and booze and, uh -huh. and fuel, and that's why it's more expensive in Canada. But then we get free health care and other things, so it's more socialist than the States. Yeah. But the States has gotten a lot more left-leaning lately, so I wouldn't be surprised if their liquor prices start going up. They'll start thinking, yeah, we can get more taxes if we tax that liquor and uh, cigarettes and all that stuff, so we should get our... We shouldn't count on that being cheap, cheap, cheap forever. <laughs> so, but yeah, when we do go to shore, we always take advantage of the fact it's way cheaper in the States. So that's the plan. So if you go, if you want to look at last year's uh, episodes, you'll know where some of the places we went. If you live in any of those cities, send us an email at cruisingoffduty at gmail.com. And maybe we can organize a meetup. Like if we're at an anchorage, uh, we can, you'll know, well, you'll know if you go to our Instagram or Facebook. Okay, so we'll keep that. I'll We're, keep on top of it. Yeah. I'll try and keep it. We'll do it this year. We did last year until we ran out of phone data, but we have more um, phone data this year. Yeah. So we're going to post on Instagram or Facebook in almost live where we are, where we're going to be the next day. If you live in any of those cities and you want to like, and you have a boat and you want to anchor near us and, and shoot the breeze, uh, we're more than happy to, uh, you know, do that. Socially distanced, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're always, we always up for meeting more people. So Anyways, that's it. I'm going to do a quick tour, and I'm also going to kind of show you, though, that where we're stowing our big scooter and our EUC and all that stuff. Just so you know, when we're on a boat for a month, you've got to do a lot of food storage. And Janice is literally under I every set I everything I could. Tea. Every single hole is full. Yeah. So. <laughs> but we could still not fit it all in. So as you can see, we got food and booze. There is a huge opening locker there that drops all the way down, and it's filled with beer and other drinks. And we still couldn't fit more in, so we put it on top. All our dries, like cereals and stuff. Toast and crackers. I'm trying chippies, my chips. Chippies, hamburger buns and stuff. Over here is just our general kitchen storage area. Fridge is jammed. Well, it's, you know, fairly jammed. It's mostly and, produce and common, um, condiments. Vegetables, yeah. fruit, and some drinks. Yeah. And this is uh, full of uh, meat. Meat. All our frozen meat. We have froze a ton of meat and it's all in that cooler. So that way we don't have to go to shore too much to buy groceries. And... We're filled to the gunnels with water and fuel. And I left this open because I wanted to show you where we store our, this is Janice's uh, electric scooter. And there is my electric unicycle, the Sh veteran Sherman. Well, that's where we're gonna get around in. And we got a new barbecue. It's all shiny and blue. Haven't even used it yet. But the boat is ready. The dinghy's ready. Oh, another thing from last year we didn't have. We were using that crappy electric trolling motor. We actually got our six horsepower gas motor so we can go explore around in our dinghy. And that's it. So this is the new club. Let me just step out. I mean, hopefully there's no wind. It picks up on the mic. But this is our new club, Collins Bay. And uh, just so you know, we talked about it being an actual yacht club. That floating thing is the clubhouse. The actual office is that house over there. But that's the social clubhouse that people up on top drink. Supposedly, uh, people say in years gone by before COVID, it was quite the party central, and we're really close to that. And that's what gives you a reciprocal. When you're part of a yacht club, you pay a little bit more for the, quote, yacht club privileges, but then you get reciprocals at other clubs to get free nights stay at their clubs. And it's nice to have that. So if there's ever a big storm of brewing, then you... Uh, then you can do that. You can be at an actual slip tied up and get fresh water and maybe plug in for electrical. So there, so there you go, that was a quick tour. Oh, one other thing, just so you, in case you've never seen our previous episode where we did a tour. Jana sleeps in that room and I sleep in this room. And if you ever wonder why we sleep in two separate rooms, it's because- I'm too tall for that other half of it. Let me turn the light on. 
it's a bit of a mess in here. Now, where she would sleep was all the camera bags, electronics, and whatnot, or float or uh, stand up paddleboard. The reason is this is where she would have to sleep in here, and she has to climb over my head to get out to go to the washroom four or five times a night. And she goes at least <laughs> at least two or three times yeah. a night. So it became almost that it, and too tall. Like that that little yeah. section is just an inch or two too short for yeah. me to be comfortable. It cuts off at least six inches from what I have on so my side. So I have side. to sleep on a diagonal with my feet in his feet. Yeah, and she sleeps like she's in a coffin, straight as a board. So I need the whole length. <laughs> she does. So she gets the V birth all to herself. But when uh, Jake and Rachel come, they're gonna take that. And I said, Are you gonna sleep on top of me again over here? And she's like, She literally. <laughs> yeah. She literally I mean, would rather this, sleep. This is a bunk. I mean, oops, there's more food back here. But yeah, this is a bunk. I can sleep on my back. I have, it's plenty long. Oh, thank God and she's... I can just dash to the bathroom without having to yeah. fight my way in and out of bed. And by the way, this is the bathroom. So we shower, we do everything in here. It's awesome. Our water pressure is really good too. We, we had a leak. So much good stuff. So great. Our boat yeah. is so much better this year. We fixed fridge. He fixed fridge. He fixed water pressure. We got the motor dinghy, dinghy motor fixed. Yeah. Like, and it's water be pressure way better in many ways. Yeah, we've always had a running fridge. I've always been able to get that working again. Uh, I found a trick now, but um, having a working fridge is a, is a must. Yeah. But this is the first year where we haven't had a leak in our water line because I found it and I fixed it. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Um, but we replaced that line, and now you turn the water pressure on. We've never experienced this. This is like new to us, like a brand new boat. First time ever. You turn on the water pressure. And you forget you leave the pump on because once it's fully pressurized, the pump doesn't come on. And yeah. there's times we've left it on by accident for hours and we never hear the motor. And we're like, oh, because in the past, if we left it on, we knew we left it on because every like 30 like, seconds yeah. or a minute, it would go, bah, right? Because the water was water leaking, leaking out, out into our bilge. <laughs> and the other thing too is now we always have water in our bilge now. That's the sound of the bilge pump. And it would slow down if it hit water. It never slows down. There's no water in our bilge. So this is like a brand new boat for us. We've never had this. Yeah, it's all these magical. Yeah. So when we took a shower events. before, we would rush because and we knew. And I will shower. I'm not yeah. like this is not roughing it. I'm, yeah. I want to. This is not camping. I want to enjoy. It. Yeah, I do camp. Believe me, I can rough it. I, yeah. I, I, do, <laughs> I can camp really rough. Yeah. But the boat is like a cottage. It's yeah. Supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to have all the amenities. Uh -huh. All right. I, 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 uh -huh. I don't like. So now we have hot water whenever we run our engine. That we get hot water. Um, and now we can leave our water pressure on even when we're not using it. And when you take a shower, you don't have to rush because in the yeah. past, if you took a shower while you're scrubbing and you've turned the, the, the shower off, you'd hear the, the pump pumping on water every time, even though you're not using it. So you're always like, oh no, we're blowing through water. Uh, yeah, and we would blow through water. We'd have to yeah. fill the tanks. Yeah, right. Now we won't have to stop and get water. As much. Like we used to go to the fuel dock just as an excuse to get water. Yeah. Half the time like we didn't even need fuel. We need gas. Yeah. So yeah. we'd go, oh, can you fill this up and can we get some water? And they're like, sure. And they pump in like, $20 <laughs> yeah. of fuel. They're like, oh, you're already full. I'm like, oh, okay, well, we're still using the water. <laughs> so so now we won't won't need the water. Yeah. So that's good. We won't have to pretend to get fuel as much. So that's that it. Makes, so lots, lots of improvements. Yeah. Hopefully by the end of our trip, there'll be some more um, stuff open. Lifting of rules. maybe indoor dining. It would be nice to go actually sit, yeah. you know, like a, mo a Moxie's or a, yeah. or, you know, a steakhouse and actually have a nice. Instead our of, our know, vaccine rates are very high and they're going up higher and higher and. Yeah, and uh, we're soon going to be into phase uh, two. I think phase two is coming up next week where hair, like salons, people can get haircuts finally. And, and yeah. then like three weeks after that, phase three, well, our yeah. vac vacation will be over. <laughs> and it ju it's June 27th right now. So those, those you, know, you can see we're behind the States. The States has been yeah. a lot more open for a while. And it's because Canada completely dropped the ball with not getting enough vaccinations quickly enough. Yeah. And the U.S. was faster at getting people vaccinated. So that's why we're still like lagging behind them in our yeah. opening. So, but it is what it is. So yeah, we are still very lucky. We maybe next year we'll actually get enjoy. to explore the U.S. side of Lake Ontario. Yeah, next so year. next year, one more reason to go. So, anyways, that's it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you want to touch base with us, cruisingoffduty at gmail dot com. Uh, just send us an email if you live in one of those cities, and uh, maybe we'll try and arrange uh, uh, anchoring near each other and shoot the breeze. So. Right, and if you're fully vaccinated, and we're fully vaccinated, well, he's fully vaccinated. And I'm maybe not vaccinated. we'll meet for. So if you're vaccinated, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe we could have a beer <laughs> on the actual same boat, but we'll see. Anyways, talk to you later. Anything else? Uh, no. Okay, ciao for now. Bye. Okay, now it's getting really, really, really nasty out here. The winds are really high. Well, you've been getting spray on the lens, and I'm under the Dodger. Yeah, you can't see anything out here. If it wasn't for now, Yonix, I wouldn't know where I was.
This is not good. So here's my Navionics showing me where I am on my way to my track. So thank God for technology. If it wasn't for that, you wouldn't know if you're heading right towards land or where you're going. Certainly wouldn't want to lose your engine right now, GP. At the liberty of the winds switching back and forth. Just don't want to get struck by lightning. That was really, 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 really sad. There's Janice. She has a migraine. She does a lie down. And I'm out here. Dang it, the Dodger. The autopilot's steering me on the course. Got the engine going. Wall warning was in effect with 40 knot winds, and I think we've uh, hit it dead center. So, uh, again, like I said, thank God for technology. If it wasn't for Navionics, I wouldn't know where the hell I am. I could be heading right towards shore for all I know. Oh, listen to that, eh? Coming down in buckets. Mostly there's even a chance of hail, so let's not get that. still our fenders but such a calm day earlier we just threw them on the side of pinned in the bar there but uh, you can see the old Canadian flag getting soaked at least it gives me an indication of which direction the wind's coming from because it's one minute is coming from this side and then it's coming from this side then it's coming from behind us then it's coming in front of us the flag gives me a good indication of which direction the prevailing wind is I'm sure the camera's getting wet too, because I'm getting wet. Jesus. This is insane. I'm just looking ahead to make sure there's nobody else wandering around in the haze as well. I'm glad I have an autopilot, because I would hate to stand in the driving rain if I didn't have to. The dry ginger ale is getting very watery, I bet. But, oh well. Still. Oh yeah, waves. It's a confused sea too because now the waves were coming from behind us, but the wind is coming from beside us. So the, we're getting contradictory angles there and starting to become a confused sea. Look at these following waves. Thank God we're not going into it, that's all I gotta say. Going with big waves, not so bad. Going against them, it would be an absolute pound fest. Had we known we were gonna get this kind of weather, it was supposed to be calm today. We would have taken the engine off our dinghy and put it on the board there, but uh, it was supposed to be like four to eight knots. I thought we'd be motoring most of the time on what would be relatively calm Lake Ontario. Yeah, no such luck. Luckily we got tied pretty close to the back so the you know, off-duty is actually blocking a lot of the shop from the dinghy so it's not bouncing too much. Oh, big lightning. Just to my left there. Well, there's the sound of it. I just don't want to get struck by something like that. I'm super glad I have this Dodger Bimini combo. Giving us uh, the ability to stand in the companion way and watch what's going on without getting absolutely drenched. Let's check the old Navionics again. Yeah, we're doing good. Still on our path. Actually, uh, steered away from the land a little bit to give myself a little bit of clearance should the wind really start pushing me towards shore. I'll let you know if anything new happens. I think it's just going to rain like this until it peters out. 